In this video, we're going to look at how to create a um, standard start stop circuit diagram using the constructor software. So, to begin, we need to click on the icon in the tray at the bottom for our constructor software. So, again, if you're not sure which icon it is, if you hover over it, eventually it will tell you that it's the constructor 10. And when you double click on that, it launches the constructor software. The opening screen you will see that we have the uh, space to create the drawing and it has been given to us with a three PowerPoint system and that is used typically when you are trying to create the power diagram um, and we will be doing that in a later class. So for today's class, we need to convert this three-point power system to a two-point system for our 120-volt standard start-stop circuit. So if we right-click on any of these power points, we are given the option to convert that to single-phase two-wire. We're also going to want to drag these. Any component that we place on the desktop, we can drag to give ourselves a little bit more room as we're doing this, and similarly with this one. Now as we start to explore the desktop a little bit, you'll see there's a variety of dashed lines and if you hover over that it will tell you that that's the place later on. We'll see how to connect our wires and then there's also boxes and those squares are places that we can install our components. And as you see as I hover over this it says that if I left click I will add the current symbol which at this time I realize you may not know what that is but I would actually like to get my symbol library to appear so if I right click on that box I will get my symbol library to appear. It is set to the default library. There are many other libraries for us to choose from at some point in the future we'll be using more of those libraries. So whatever symbol is selected meaning that when you click on the desktop that it will appear is highlighted by the dancing box. So where we want to start with is our normally closed push button that we're using for our stop button and to place that on the desktop. So we go over to our symbol library and we're not again 100% sure of what our symbols are or remember them. If we simply hover over those symbols it will give us a box telling us exactly what those symbols are. So you can see we have found our normally closed um, push button reduced for our stop button. We click on that and you'll see that it appeared where I right clicked over here. Um, the next component that I would like to then install is my start button. Again, normally open, push button, click and it becomes installed. I now need to install my coil, my motor starter coil. And so we again go to our symbols, scroll down. Now these, if I hover over them, are not motor starter coils, they are motors. That is something I'll be using later, again, when I'm creating a power diagram, but not when I'm creating my control diagram. So I'm going to continue to scroll down until I find my round load circuit symbols. And you can see I am now in that area. There's a whole variety of them in here. Some are already labeled for me. I prefer not to use the ones that are labeled, but I'd rather use this larger one called two-wire relay coil click on that and you can see that has been installed. Um, I'm going to slide this over one more spot because we still need to install our overload contact here and our holding our memory contact below the start button. So I'm going to put the normally open contact in there first. Again, normally open contact. And I'm going to put my normally closed over here that I use for my um, overloads. So now I have all the basic components uh, clicked and installed on the uh, desktop. Now I need to finish it off with installing my wires. So again I can click here to connect my uh, hot to there and again click here to connect and put my normally open contact and my start push button in parallel and then connect my overloads over here to the neutral. You'll notice as I clicked and installed those wires, these large red boxes appeared. Those, as you can see as I hover over, are telling me those are my wire number label boxes. 
So I'm going to click on the first one and put my wire 1 in there. So I know that that is my wire 1. Um, on the second one, which is 3, wire 3, my wire 4, and finally my wire 2. The other items that I'm going to want to name are the other components that I installed. So we're going to name our stop button, our start push button, um, my coil. Now I just want to stop here and, and provide a word of caution. You need to make sure that this coil is labeled first before you do any try to do any of these contacts, and you'll see why in a minute. So this is my motor starter, um, motor starter one coil. Now I could also label this M1 because it is M1. However, this software is going to not open and close that contact when I go to try to simulate it. And so I need to let the software know that this open contact works with this coil. So that is why I had to label this first because now when I right click on this contact it gives me a drop down box. One of the choices I can choose is called assignment. Once I click on assignment everything that I have labeled so far in this drawing shows up. I want it to work with M1 which shows up under my standard relays. I click on M1, I leave this set at instantaneous, in a future, much future class we deal with timers will be changing it to this. For our purposes we never need to make any changes to the reaction type, we leave it at instantaneous and we click OK. Now you can see that this has been labeled M1 for us and you can also see that these two then are highlighted. When I hover over them they turn into a teal color and that means when I go to simulate this that those two things will in fact work together. Now the normally closed contact I put over here I do not want to associate that to work with this because if you remember the overload contact on the motor starter does not operate with the magnet. It simply opens when the motor draws too many amps. I do want to manually label that so I know what it does, so I'm going to call it M1 Overload. So now at this point in time, I can take and um, run this circuit and see how it's going to operate for me. So if I go up here in the top left where it says main power switch and click on that, we are now in the simulation mode. And so when I click on the start button, and push it down and release it, you can see that the power is now all the way through and the motor starter is on. Press the stop button, you can similarly see that the power stops here and the motor starter has turned off. Now you'll also notice that we do not have um, some other components installed that I would like to see um, us do, which are the rung numbers and some of the contact configurations. So we're going to go back, turn the circuit back off, and go back to our uh, screen that we can work on. And so I would like to put those rung numbers in first. So when I click on this, you can see the one that says rung number. I click that. That's my first rung. This is my second rung. And then next to every coil that I have contacts assigned to, I want to put another symbol which is called the contact configuration. Now, when I go to run this software, you can see this is rung 1, this is rung 2. Okay, And actually what I should have done, I can quickly do that, is I should have made this rung 3. So, here's my rung 1, my rung 2, and my rung 3. You can see that motor starter 1 has an open contact on rung 3. So that's what doing that does for us. A couple other quick points and tips um, as I close this uh, out this video is there's a couple ways that you can make some adjustments to the size of this if it's easier for you to see in one way or the other. By these adjustments you can increase the different spaces um, for the drawing just so you know that that's available to you. This concludes the video on the standard start-stop circuit on the constructor software.